Hello, this is Roland. I want to tell you about my new three-part series on meditation. I think it's excellent. Um, first of all, I want to talk about um, meditative reading. Meditative reading. And then I talk about finding the meditative state, obtaining the meditative state, attaining it, and then reading. And then I talk about um, finding the meditative state. And then you can read or not read. I think it's excellent because I also talk about biblical. What does the Bible say about meditation? I read several verses from the Bible about it. Um, and then I read from a short and easy method of prayer written by Madame Jeanne Guillon, a nice lady who lived in the late 1600s and early 1700s in France. She was there. Also, Archbishop Francois Fenelon was there, who has many spirit, wonderful spiritual writings. Both of them read. And around the same time, Miguel Molinos was uh, was um, also wrote a wonderful little book about meditation, the meditative life, finding the presence of God. See, that's what it's all about. But let me keep it very simple today as a, by way of introduction. Let me suppose that you are someone who um, is just is just for the first time thinking about maybe putting a toe in the water as far as meditation goes. Okay. Now, here's what I want to say. First of all, when you begin, you don't have to say, well, I want to find God or expect something, you know, angels or the sky to open up and trumpets to sound or anything like that. Okay. Basically, it's something like, um, uh, in fact, you may not even be sure about any of these things. You may not... Well, in your heart, when you were a little kid, you kind of knew that God exists and Jesus and so forth, but you were never really sure about it, okay? Uh, and you went about your life. It wasn't something that you were thinking about all the time. Maybe from time to time you gave it some thought. You wondered about life. See, the spirit of wonder, wondering about things, that's part of... Um, that's a part of what qualifies you for being able to do the right meditation. See, there are a lot of meditations. Maybe there's thousands of them. Most of them are no good. Okay, Most of them are harmful. I'll tell you why in a couple of minutes. Um, but let's again say that you, you went about your life. You played sports. You had friends. You went to movies. You watch television, you went to school, you studied, maybe you went to college, maybe you got a job, you went to work, maybe you started a family. Okay? But, as the years went by, you began to see that there was something not quite right about the way you exist. You sensed that life has a meaning and a purpose. And you sensed that, um, there were, you, that you were missing the boat somehow. Missing the mark. But even more than that, you sensed um, something wrong about your resentments toward people, your judgment of them. In your mind, you condemned some people. Maybe your father for not being there for you, or your mom for yelling at you, or screaming at you, or rejecting you, or other people for, for being phony, for not having love, for using you, for taking advantage. Okay. other people who you thought you could trust or you thought had answers and it turns out they didn't see so you've been disappointed by people you've been hurt by them and by their acts of especially your parent your father who undoubtedly who failed you okay and so you resent them you had you have resentment you have some grudges going back to th things that happened to you or things that you wished you could have had 
he wished he could have been with you, had a close relationship with your father or something, and it didn't happen. Okay, so you went out in the world looking for love, and then all you got was use or abuse. And you also begin to see that what you think of as love, your love, you think, if you're a lady, you think your love can transform a man into a prince. And if you're a man, you think that, you know, um, the biological side of things, plus bringing her flowers and chocolate once in a while, you think that that's love, okay? Valentine's Day cards. And then you find out that it's not. And if you're a man, undoubtedly, you also tried to be a people pleaser. A lady also, but men, a lot of men are very are weak. They want to be popular. See, a man, a father, is supposed to stand for something. He stands for principle, but with a twinkle in his eye, not with anger. Okay? But he stands for something. He has principle. He has honor. And all the beautiful virtues. That's what a man is supposed to be, not a people pleaser. See, a man, should, a man has to look, and, and he mustn't look to the world for support mustn't look to his wife for support. He must look within so he can stand so he can stand alone. As one man said, um, a man is, should be on his knees before God but stand tall in the world like George Washington. George Washington, a very noble man, a brave man, a man of principle. Okay, so he stood tall in the world on his knees before God. See, that's worth thing. But, let me get started again. Okay, so so there you are, and you see that there's something wrong with your resentments toward people and the grudges that you harbor. And you also, uh, and you would like to live um, uh, at a higher plane. You know, you don't like being resentful, jealous, bitter, spiteful. See, you see that about yourself. And you, and you don't like it. But you've tried to change yourself and it hasn't worked. Okay? So, so there you are. And then sometimes um, some issues arise based upon that, that are extensions of a faulty lifestyle. Maybe you drank or took drugs or smoked marijuana or you were promiscuous. Okay? Or you were... Um, yeah, you didn't work, or you spent all your money, or something. So all these issues start to arise. Maybe there's a divorce. See, maybe your kids, you have a good relationship with your kids. Health issues. See, all these things begin to arise, and you begin to sense that somehow, see, that blaming other people is not the answer. You have to kind of figure out where you went wrong. Okay? So, there you are. And somehow, you're ready. Okay, so, right? So it's, it, in your mind, maybe it's, you're not thinking about religion. You're not thinking about anything like that. You're just seeing that something's not quite right. And you, you, you yearn for something good and something pure. See? Something noble that you can lean up against. Something you can count on. Something that won't betray you. Something that won't lie to you. Okay? Um, and you see that you're not that. You've disappointed other people who maybe they look to you if you were a big brother or a husband. Maybe they look to you for that. But see. So there you are. And then somehow, you know, you're, so now you're searching. But you're searching for real answers. Now you're searching for truth, for real answers, not phony answers, okay? not shallow answers, but real answers. Well, now you have a searching attitude, and that's that's. And one other thing, you also see that you are wrong. You see a little bit. You don't like seeing that, but you can see that you are wrong. Your resentments are wrong. You know, you betrayed your wife or your husband, that's wrong. Or you yelled at your kids or mean impatient with them. You see that that's wrong. You hate your dad or you hate your mom. You see that that's wrong, see? You've been selfish and instead of doing what's right, instead of being there for your little brother or sister, for example, you went off and smoked, drank alcohol or smoked marijuana or 
went after your career as if it was a wonderful thing, but it was mainly just to get away. See? Not that there's anything wrong with getting away from an oppressive environment, but, you know, maybe you left behind someone you could have helped. Or, and you see that you could have said it, been a good example, okay, to your wife who divorced you or to your kids who you disappointed. You. See? You could have been a good, set a good example for them, but instead you weren't. You were selfish. Maybe that's the main thing you begin, you're beginning to see. You see your own selfishness. Okay? And um, you don't like seeing it. You don't like it. But you see that you can't change yourself. And you wish you could be different, but... See? Well, now you search. Now you... With that kind of an attitude, a willingness to see the truth, instead of denying it, which all along you were escaping from truth. You escaped into your into reading, into poetry, into music, into uh, food, to drinks, substances, partying, people, solving other people's issues, study, ambition, setting goals. See? Always it was escaping from, from um, the truth, the plain and simple truth. So it was hard to even sit still anymore because if you sat still on a Sunday afternoon with nothing to do, Nothing, nothing on the horizon to do. And as you sit there quietly, begin to feel antsy. See? Truth begins to dawn on you. And so you, you reach for something to escape. But at a certain point, you, 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 your desire to have true answers and your willingness to see your own wrong makes you ready, for, qualifies you, say, somehow, for the proper meditation and then you might hear someone like me and then give it a try okay well okay so then it begins okay then it begins a wonderful journey back to your true self okay and then on this journey as time goes by as days weeks months years go by then you will begin to see some of these Things that you wondered about when you were younger, all along. You begin, you'll begin to see, you begin, you'll just wake up one morning and you'll just see what's true. Well, that's the inner light, see, which you must become a friend of. You've been an enemy of it, an enemy of conscience, running from it. Now you want to be a friend of, of it. And the other thing perhaps you have seen is that as you um, as you fled from the inner light and you became more and more resentful, you may, you may have turned the resentment on yourself and then used various things to escape reality. You also begin, you begin to sense that there is um, another force in the universe. There's something dark okay, that um, wants to claim you. And the farther you go, farther along you are in your plunge from reality, from the inner light, from what you knew in your heart when you were a little child. The farther along you go, the closer it gets. And then you begin to have this sense that um, there's something there that's, mis that's misleading you and that wants to, uh, wants to do you in, okay? Well, okay, well, that's, uh, you know, it's a little bit awesome, but... Um, you know, um, so that's true, okay? So all of it leads you to become more and more um, uh, sincere in your search, whatever that is. And and whenever you're ready, and I don't know when you'll be ready, but at a certain point you're ready and then God somehow enters your life. But it's not like he enters your life so much. I mean, it's not like you know that that's what's happening. In the beginning, it's simply you're crying out for true answers and then you try the meditation. Okay? Then, see, then you begin to, um, things begin to change for the better. Now, meditation. There's a proper meditation, which is learning to be still. God, in the Bible, it says, be still and know that I am God. And it's an ancient meditation. It's a Christian meditation, but it's also a spiritual meditation. You don't have to be a Christian. That's what I've just been telling you. You don't have to 
you don't have to have been going to church or reading the Bible or even believing anything that you read in the Bible or even believing Christianity. You don't have to. But you're just, somehow you're sincere, searching for the for truth. Okay? And you're willing to see that you're wrong and you do see it. See, you don't like seeing it, but you do see that you're wrong, especially your resentments and your selfishness. But you've tried rolling up your sleeve, sleeves and trying studying and making affirmations and setting goals to be better and nicer. And you see there's something false about it, okay? So you may have, you may have gone back to the bottle because you couldn't stand your own falseness, okay? Well, okay, so, um, so you, you, there's a proper meditation, sitting still and observing thought, becoming objective to thought, instead of being lost in thought, to see, see the thought. Okay, it's not blank. We're not talking about blanking thought, or making thought go away, or blanking the mind, or anything like that. We're just talking about observing thought. Observing thought. See, you have ears, but you can, but you, but you can hear with your ears, but you can also understand. You can see with your eyes, but you can also perceive. See, you can have knowledge, but you can also have understanding. Okay, so. Um, so likewise, there can be a thought, but you can observe the thought. See? And when you observe the thought, you're no longer part of it. You're not lost in it. See, for a lot of people, see, most people spend a lot of their time lost between their own two ears. And I've always said you can't find God in thinking. You can't find God in study. You won't find God in imagination. You'll find God where thoughts are not, in reality. See? God's light, there's something else I'll tell you, is more like a light that shines on things. God rarely, God rarely talks to people with words. His light shines upon things and you simply see. Just like you can see that 1 plus 1 equals 2, and then you can see ahead that 101 plus 1 is 102. See? A cat or a dog or a chipmunk can't see that, but you can. And if you can see someone that's being cruel, so like you see a mom and she's being really, really mean to her little child, when you see that, you know there's something wrong with it. Nobody has to tell you. You don't have to go take a class. You just see it. Okay? You see it. Even when you were four years old, if you saw injustice, you knew it was un some dose injustice. Injustice. So you can see. That's your soul. It can see in the light. Your soul can see in the light which I call intuition, when your soul senses something in the life and it's intuition, it's wordless. You just see. Okay? You just see. It's wordless. Now this realization that you, what you see, what you perceive, what you realize, what you know without words, then it, you, can, you can then say it later and talk about it and then it becomes words, but, these, but it flows from the, from the realization, just like Einstein. His discoveries came through his intuition. See, and then later he wrote about them or did math about them. But the discovery itself came from through intuition. It was like wordless. It was like a word, an insight. Okay, so that's the proper meditation. He sincerely wanted to know the truth. Okay, so now you can see why just wanting to feel better or be less stressed or work on your work on yourself, or something like that. See, it's not good enough. It just has to be a pure yearning for truth. You, see, you may not even realize that you're yearning for truth. See, but somehow deep, deep inside you are. Well, okay, then the, the proper meditation is what you need. Now, most other meditations, I'll tell you briefly what's wrong with them, okay? What's wrong with them is that, um, is that A, first of all, they, they come from the wrong source. See, they're not from God. They're from something else, some other source. Okay? It may be malevolent. It may be seductive. But on the other hand, it might be just some person, okay, with feet of clay. Some person with feet of clay comes up with it, okay? Well, maybe it's not... 
maybe it's not harmful. Maybe it's just simple and it's relaxing. It says relax and de-stress. Okay, all right. But see, it's not enough. It won't. It, and so the problem with those types is that if you start to practice something like that, it will then interfere with the real thing. See, that's, all, that's the problem also with studying religion. Even studying the Bible. See? You study and try to figure it out and analyze and look at these different experts and preachers and writers and what did they say and see, it interferes. But realizing, realizing the truth. Okay. So what I was saying is, this, but the main thing is, I said it could be it's from the wrong source. But the other thing is that it, um, it's just more of the same that, that hasn't worked and that's leading you in, on the path of destruction. Okay? More of the same, which is getting lost in thought, lost in imagination. See? Visualizing. Even if it's visualizing something nice like a, a lake with ducks on it. Or a waterfall. Okay, well, that's more of the same. Same visualization, being lost in thinking, lost in imagination. Okay. What you want to do is get out of thinking, out of imagination, out of hypnosis, out of escaping. See, it's more of an escape. Ultimately, these other meditations are um, uh, the, taken to their conclusion. They find a peace apart from God. See, the, see, conflict is not a bad thing, and anxiety is not a bad thing when your when your conflict is with conscience. Your anxiety is because you haven't been you've been resentful. See, resenting people or impatient, angry, hostile, selfish. See, then you have conflict with the inner light, in which you can see your own wrong, and you have conflict. Well, okay, then at least you have conflict. At least you know the. At least the inner light is still shining. You're, you're still perceiving it enough to know that there's that you're that there's something going on that you're you're not quite right. But someone who's so far away from the God, intuition from God's light, which we feel is conscience, they're so far away from it. They're so lost in their alternative reality that they have a peace apart from God. See. Which is not good. So you, another reason why you why you need to get out of thinking, learn to separate from thought and observe thought. I'll give you an example. If a person's in a dream and then in the dream somebody's chasing them and it's scary, okay? Well, the person can wake up and their heart is beating fast and you know they were screaming, having a nightmare. But then when you're awake, now you see that it was just a nightmare. Okay, it was just a dream. It wasn't reality. But as long as you're lost in it, it's like reality. There's a lot of people get lost in their thinking, lost in worrying, reliving the past, planning for the future, planning and scheming and imagining. And fantasy, lost in fantasies, imagining themselves being great and wonderful and a hero or a heroine. And imagine giving other people their comeuppance and see all of that. Imagining their greatness or See, well, we're, ma we're imagining all these awful things. And they say 90% of the things that we worry about never happen anyway, or 99% never happen anyway. But people are, is when they're lost in their worry. Have you ever tried to, to, to get someone to snap? A support? Have you ever encountered someone who's resentful and very negative? They're very resentful. They're very negative. You, you can hardly reach them. You can say nice things to them and try to, perk them up a little bit and they can't accept it. They're too they're lost, absorbed in this fantasy. So that's not so that's what we don't want. We don't want more of the same. Whether the images are nice images or scary images. And when you when then when you're talking about chanting and fixating on some sound or humming or uh, anything like that. It's just it's hypnotic. Hyp hyp hypnosis separates you from reality and gets you lost into some alternative, lost in your mind, where you are suggestible. 
And so when you're suggestible, someone someone can suggest to you, oh, you're, everything's fine and you're wonderful and, you know, peace. and but it's, but it's a lie. See? But you're suggestible. On the other hand, they can say you're no good, you're terrible. See? Which is also a lie. But, um, see, you, you accept it because you're... You, you're not separate from the thought. You can't see that it. it's just a suggestion that it's not true. Or someone can say something that is true. They can say something that is true and you accept it because they said it or because they, they say it into your mind and it pops into your mind and you accept it that way. But but that's not the same thing as seeing for yourself. See, that's what real faith, real faith is just seeing for yourself whether something is true or not. So, okay, so I went, this was kind of a long-winded introduction, but I did cover some important items. And, uh, um, you know, you could just start the meditation. You don't need to watch these videos. You, if you feel moved to start it, then just go start it. Get the uh, classic meditation that has the three books with it, or try the free meditation. I call it the free meditation or the easy meditation. You can... Begin to practice it with my listening to the audio of my voice and listen to my voice for you know for a couple of days or several days and then eventually you can do it on your own. But it's only six minutes long, so it only takes six minutes to learn basically. So uh, you could do that. On the other hand, you could do that, get started, and also watch my um, videos, video lectures, or you could watch the video lectures. See, while you're considering whether you want to give it a try or not, it's, it's, it's all good. Okay, it's all good. But if you do feel like, uh, if you, it's not so much feel like. That's a, that's not the way it is. If you, if you sense that you, something somehow says wordlessly, if you try the meditation. Okay, then you might as well just go ahead and do it. But be prepared. That something else, something else will be there saying, don't, but be prepared for something else to be there also saying, oh, don't do it. If you meditate, something terrible will happen to you. And Roland doesn't know what he's talking about. And you're not ready yet. And this is not for you. And this is weird. And see, all, all kinds of creating, throwing all kinds of flack in the air and creating all these imbroglios and what if this and what if that and try, you know, it, it just confusion and just doing all kinds of things to get you not to meditate. So, see, but then you should just overlook that. Just overlook. Go ahead and meditate anyway. Okay. My name is Roland.